Uncle Bill your friend. The story is exciting from start right to the end. So everyone come join the fun. Come on and let's pretend. From Ferndale. It's radio's outstanding children's theater. Soul of Detroit. Created by M.L. Elric. Mark Fellhauer. To get us started on today's story, Beauty and the Beast. You asked in a rock and the truck right in my face. It's gone. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on. That is not paid for by them. That is paid for by the people of Detroit. You are qualified, young man. I'm not qualified for this job. Let me tell you something. You want to go right now? Okay? You want to go right now? Hey, kids, it's your old pal, M.L. Elric. And Sean has done it again. We had the intro set up. Last week we had the beauty, Erica Erickson. Beautiful inside and outside. A, a highly, highly skilled news person. Someone who's great on the show. We did a bonus episode with Erica. It was fantastic. Uh, Ask Erica, we're calling it. Just some great advice. She's uh, one, of the, one of the bright lights and so we thought this week we'd feature the beast, and Sean's not here. So of course goes, he's not. There goes. Uh, he might join us later. Uh, there goes remotely. the setup. He there might he join. Us. He lays never look better though. Okay. Just no, he's chair. he's looking good. We got his good side, which is no side. But we uh, we are uh, we are bringing you something special this week. Anyways, in addition to the stalwart Mark uh, Fellhauer here, keeping things going from the production side and from the from the barely anti kink shaming side. Uh, we're joined by Neil rule who was on a roll with the, uh, <laughs> Oakland golden Grizzlies. Now a couple buckets different and the Grizzlies could be playing this weekend in the final four. I guess theoretically, right. They're the only team in the tournament that was undefeated against NC state in regulation. So yeah, yeah. theoretically yeah. you could say that, I guess. Yeah, unbelievable. So so Neil is the voice of the Golden Grizzly. You've also heard him call DCFC games. He's on Woodward Sports. He has a show that he'll be going to right after this. And he's also calling other soccer games. Neil, you uh, have gone from a guy trying to get his toehold in to being in demand in the uh, in the broadcast industry. No, and, and it you know it's uh, overnight success, ten years in the making, right? Exactly. Like that's uh, <laughs> that, that's how it goes. But now I know what it's like for you guys. You know what I'm saying, ML and, and Mark. Like now I know what it's like for you guys. How do you deal with the time management aspect of this? So, well, well, I'm, I'm always I'm, in this basement, so I mean I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm already halfway there, right? What I heard Neil say is uh, ten years, so we're halfway there. This is our <laughs> Fifth anniversary, so we're Lord. a long way to... And we're not moving anywhere. To, yeah, <laughs> not up. No, it's, Maybe down. It's just, this may be our final three. We'll have to see. But uh, no, it, this, there's a ton to do. I mean, when you're juggling things, you just... You know, I, I, think, I think the thing for us is this show is not very convenient, but we really like doing it. And one of the reasons we like doing it is we like spending time with each other when Sean can bother to make it <laughs> and we we like bringing in great guests and people have had tremendous experiences and you've just had an experience that had the whole country talk i mean the golden grizzlies they 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 for a minute there were the hot team they were on the tip of everybody's tongues they were the i, I know i know the the sniper said they're not cinderella but but they were cinderella <laughs> Goki, really yeah. were were falling in love with this team yeah i mean i get where jack was coming from with that because here's here's what is kind of the amazing part about it that the Oakland Kentucky game was the highest rated first round or whatever they call it now second round whatever they call yeah. it now it was round the of highest 64. Re, yeah. round of 64 game uh, TV ratings wise since Zion was at Duke so I mean that kind of gives you an idea of you know the stratosphere that that game was in and and I know where Jack was was coming from with that because by any metric that you look at a box score Oakland was better than Kentucky. I know that's not the narrative and that's not what Greg Swanky uh you know chair, <laughs> chair of the SEC would want you to think but Oakland was the better team. They shot the ball better, they out-rebounded them, they had fewer turnovers. Like they they were the better basketball team in that game. They led for 28 minutes of it and again that's where Jack was coming from with it. They were the better team. That's a fact. All right, I got to ask you in all honesty. Yes, sir. I mean, what going into the game, what percent chance did you really think Oakland was going to win? Um, it, it's amazing because I wish, in retrospect, I should have got on the coaches' level because the coaches really liked the matchup. They said of all the potential. I mean, you're out there in those waters, right? Like Baylor's out there, and and those teams. 
they said matchup wise, we really like this one. And I was like, I'm looking at the NBA mock drafts coming up in Kentucky, yeah. Kentucky, Kentucky. I'm like, do you really like this matchup better? And uh, well, see, matchup wise, I thought it was a bad matchup because I both teams like to run. Both teams, uh, you know, and you, you would just think that would favor the talent, but Oakland had something that Kentucky didn't, and that's guys that stayed and knew each right. other and played together, and that really showed. I thought it showed, but it's. So what percent? Give me a percent. Yeah. Did you really oh. think they would win? I want you. To, I want to nail you down. Yeah, yeah honest. Yeah, being honest. Yeah, maybe five percent, ten percent, maybe. Okay. You know, it, again, because like, look, we play a ton of these games. Like, mm-hmm. we we play these Kentucky types. All we've been in every great college basketball arena in the country outside of Duke. I mean, UCLA, North Carolina, Gonzaga, every Kansas, anywhere you can think of. And you you play at LCA, so you've played in these 22,000 seat bars. 100%. Yeah. I mean, we we do this all the time. Um but you know, at this I know how hard it is to win those games, especially when you're on the road, but that's what that's what makes the NCAA tournament great. It's as neutral of an environment as you're going to be in because officiating dictates college basketball it just does like that's just the way that it is and we know that like when we're walking in these gyms so um yeah i didn't give us i didn't think we had much of a chance i thought we had a chance and i underestimated that and that was what the oakland coaching staff was was kind of talking to me about yes they're gonna be three possibly four first round picks in the nba draft but mark exactly what you said they're 18 year old kids man Mm -hmm. and we had, you know, four-year guys and five-year guys on our team, guys that have been through those battles before, and it's different. It just is. Are they more talented? Yeah, player for player, they're more talented. But we had a game plan. We executed it. We did everything right. And again, Oakland was a better team. I know that's not the popular narrative. It wasn't. It wasn't Haley's comet coming through. It wasn't a bolt of lightning. They were better, and that's why they won. You know what else they did really well, and, and it really comes down. I, I thought Campy flat out coached Calipari. I mean, there were just little things like um, taking. I think he took a timeout just above the under eight to get a, a nice rest for the guy. Yep. Just really little things, and it's like, wow, he just outcoached a guy who makes I don't know twenty times, two hundred times what he makes. <laughs> yeah, his buyout is probably more than Oakland spends on its entire athletic sure. program. Oh yeah, like I saw his buyout was like thirty four million dollars right now, which is why he's going to be back there uh, <laughs> again, again next year. I, like I know yeah. Kentucky's Big Blue Nation, and I know they have unlimited resources, but nobody's cutting a $34 million check for someone to not coach. You were telling me before, what, what, what is their budget for yeah, basketball? My favorite stat that came out of this was uh, if you go by the by the numbers in terms of, of budgets, men's basketball budget for Kentucky is right around $23 million. Ours is right around two. So so by, wow. the, by the dollars, it was the biggest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament, by the dollars. Gee, That's well, awesome. That's spe- just great. Speaking of dollars, we have to thank our sponsors, <laughs> Dr. Yaldo, Right ML, now. that was elite right, right there. Now? That was an elite. Well, <laughs> <segment. laughs> you know, we, we got to get them at the top. Otherwise, they won't be our sponsor. And uh, while Dr. Yellow can make you see 2015, in fact, you, you see better than Jack Golke when you're shooting out there. <laughs> if you go see the doc. And Luke Nowacki, who if you if you make that that quick NIL money like Golke did, he'll tell you where to invest it. So that's there when, you, when it's time to retire. And if you like to play... We have a new sponsor. Come play Detroit. Those are the leagues I play, and we'll tell you how you can get out there and go nose to nose with me, and and probably lose because I'm pretty spectacular. And uh, what's what's crazy about the Jack Golke thing, and I, I hope you have some insight into this, Neil, is you know he's the star of that game against Kentucky. Yet he's got another game two days later, and the media just comes down on him. They want him to do interviews. Everybody wants a piece of him. I saw he tweeted out an NIL deal he did with like TurboTax, which they've done with a couple players. How I mean, how mad was that after that Kentucky win of people just like, hey, we need this guy, we need this guy. I mean, were you a part of any of that? Yeah. So here's here's how big it was. I did 16 radio interviews over that course of that 48 hours. I did. Like I'm not campy and I'm not Jack. Did, did they and I'm call not you Trey. the Golden Rule? Does anybody call you that? No, nobody does that. <laughs> really? No. Just you. Yeah, just you. At all. It's all <laughs> yours. It, 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 it feels clever if somebody else does it, but I guess maybe I'm just ahead of my time. No, but uh, camp camp did not go to sleep Thursday night into Friday because, like, look, I I told you about the budgets, um, yep. the budget difference. If camp has a, a chance to to put the program out on a platform, he's going to do it. You know, if if it means him not going to sleep, then that's what it means. It means him not going to sleep because he was going to try to juice every bit of of what we could get out of that. You know, that run right there, visibility for the program, the university, etc. Jack was an interesting story 
because, and Mark, you'll love this one. Yeah. So <laughs> all these NIL deals that came flying in, like Jack doesn't have representation or anything like right. that. He's taking what he can get. He's take, but his buddies, his high school buddies were in town to, to watch the games, you know, cause Jack's in the tournament, you know, big deal, obviously March madness. So his high school buddies are in town to watch the Plus games. Plus they were having their 10 year high school reunion, right? Yeah, I mean, I I no, had met anybody. Old. Ten he's years. not that old. But he's, he's not that old. Yeah. Close. I, 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 I got heard the joke. That. It was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, blame it on the golden rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, so his high school buddies actually handled all that stuff for oh, him. Okay. So he, because he, because Jack's about it's he's just about like LeBron. <laughs> right, right, more or less. I mean, yeah, exa- pretty much the same thing. But uh, Jack was about business. I mean, Jack was convinced that they that we were going to be Kentucky absolutely convinced of it he he said I knew I knew we were going to win that game but when all this was going on he kind of put the phone away and said I'll deal with this on Sunday you know after after you know we win again and, and I'll deal with it then and his buddies kind of handled everything it was like a it was like a TV show you know where his buddies were his agents and uh they they kind of got everything set up now he would he would film the commercials and stuff like that and do it uh, but yeah, his buddies kind of handled everything. He stayed in the moment. I mean, that next morning I was in the weight room at the hotel and, you know, working out and here comes Jack doing his regular workout too. So not a lot changed for him except for, you know, the amount of money he had. But, but that's smart because I know there's money on the table and maybe as much money as he's ever going to make playing basketball, but all the eyes of the country are on him and he had a, a great performance they're going to be watching for him in the next game. They're probably going to game plan for him for the next day, day. And if all he's doing is taking a victory lap, he's going to go from being the hero to being the goat when he's like one for 13 because he's tired, because he's been talking to agents, because he's been doing interviews, because he's been meeting cheerleaders from Kentucky who don't want to go back to Kentucky because who would want to go back to Kentucky? Uh, and so he's kind of, if he's foolish about it, if he gets drunk on that attention, He's going to go from being a hero to being the bum. And it sounds like like most 35-year-old guys, he was smart enough. <laughs> well, he had life wisdom, ML. So he, he, that's right. He, uh, Hillsdale, they, treat, they teach you. Yeah. They, they teach you to storm the Capitol on January 6th. But they teach you other things, too. So, uh, so, so that's, that's very impressive. And, and Campy, how do you strike that balance? Did he talk about striking that balance between we need to maximize our exposure but we also have to prepare for the next game because NC State, you guys took them to overtime. They just ran. Um, uh, who did they beat on Sunday? Um, Duke. Duke. They just ran Duke off the court. I watched the first half of that game. There's a question here somewhere. I watched the first half of that game. I thought, NC State, they're done. I started watching the hockey game, Michigan State, Michigan, turned it back. NC State's up by like 12. I said, like, what the hell happened? Yeah, they're on a roll. Because, uh, Mark, you brought up a point earlier about the timeout that can't be called around the media timeout, mm-hmm. and, and that's something that he's done a lot. That's another angle of the NCAA tournament. The The media timeouts are three minutes instead of two minutes because, you know, it's a billion dollar a year. Yeah, they're selling more Chevys. Yeah, absolutely. It's a billion dollar a year business. So, Because NC State doesn't play a ton of guys. They run eight yeah. deep at most, and around those media timeouts – you know, it's longer. They get you get a longer rest. You can play longer. You can play more minutes, and and that's something for them. And DJ Burns, man, he's it, incredible. He he is incredible. He is a college Nikola Jokic. Like mm-hmm. that's what he is. The way he can pass, the angles. It was funny because calling the game, you don't see a lot of guys like that in college. Like the post presence that can well, score. He can't run. It it hurt my eyes to watch him run. But what touch, man? Yeah, I mean, absolutely right. So. uh he was incredible to watch work in the post, and he's scoring the ball off the glass off these crazy angles where the ball comes off his hand. I'm like, that's not going in. And then it goes in. And um, yeah, so so I you just see keep that. expecting him to be exhausted. I mean, this run that they've been on where, you know, every, basically single elimination, five, how many get now? now uh, nine straight games, I think. Right. Like single elimination, and that guy just keeps churning. And churning and churning. And that's what makes this tournament so damn great. It's just you learn about these guys that maybe you haven't watched all year. So I, I want to go back to my question at the beginning of my long monologue. So I apologize for that. I'm, We're not, used to I'm not a radio professional like like the Golden Rule. Okay. And uh, <laughs> did, did Campy talk at all about how he struck that balance between I'm going to be available, but I also have to coach this team and we have a chance to go even further and be even bigger? Um, there wasn't a balance. Like, he was he was going to use this platform for Oakland basketball and for Oakland University and and that's where like as far as basketball coaching staffs go 
the assistants are charged with a lot of the the game planning, like the video work. Uh, our our video coordinator, uh, Jack Kramer, is elite. Like he's elite at what he does, and he gets to work and he's chopping everything up. He gets it to the assistants, and then the assistants, you know, Jeff Smith and Mike Covington and Bobby Norbert, they they formulate the game plans because that is. And people will say, well, how how can that be? That is what Oakland was able to do to, in terms of capitalizing what Campy did is as important as anything else. It just is. Like with the nature of a mid-major, you know, as a mid-major university and a mid-major college basketball program, Big Blue Nation and Calipari, that stuff free that stuff is free for them. The exposure and all that stuff. We have to fight and claw and scratch and battle for it. And so we we have to take advantage of it. So I would argue it was as important as a game plan in the long run. Okay. And well it's so fleeting too. I correct. mean you're only going to get that attention for so long. So he just he just gave up sleep. Correct. That was it. Traded sleep for the exposure. Well, the best the best story this March was after they won the uh, the league tournament, and he comes back and he works McDonald's with the drive through <laughs> as for a fundraiser. Which it's like, what what can't can't be do? And that's the fun thing about Oakland U is I tried looking for someone who's talking shit about anybody on Oakland or saying something bad, and you just you can't find it. There's just so much to love about this team. Yeah, and it's it is it's it's that it's a great story, right? Like that's that's the American college basketball NCAA tournament story. It just so happens that it was Oakland's turn this now, year to be. Now, a- what happens with Oakland? Because you know, very older team, as ML's mm-hmm. pointed out a few times with the goal key. Well, just the one is. guy who's uh, well, who's, no, he's mean, actually retired already. A lot of juniors and seniors, I believe, <laughs> taking right? Taking Social Security. Yes. Um, and the stars, Trey Townsend, is he going to come back? Well, he, right now he's a, being evaluated for the NBA draft process. So if he has the opportunity, you know, he he may enter into the NBA draft. Uh, you know, the transfer portal is an option too. Because let, let's be real about it. I know a lot of people come in and dance around about that. If someone comes with an offer of he should one hundred fifty grand, two hundred thousand, and we can you know put together fifty, which one would you know which one would you take? Yeah. Well, look what Hunter Dickinson did. He left Michigan because he said, I can get a million dollars playing for Kansas. And he did. And I think Oakland went as far as Kansas did. So, that is true. So there you go, Hunter. <laughs> yeah, but you get you also get more, I mean, as we've been talking, more exposure right. at these bigger, bigger schools. Um, and that happens when I mean, you see it all the time. Um, Alabama's, who's the stud guard for Alabama? Sears? Sears, I think, was a, was a transfer this year from a, a Mac school. So why wouldn't you? take another step up before going to the NBA. I mean, it makes total sense. It just sucks with Trey because he is so tied to this university with his parents. And, right. Mr. Oakland. Yeah. And from, yeah, being from Oxford, it's just, you don't want to see that guy, that guy go, but yeah, probably be in his best interest. But, but Mark, how can you, you know, how can you, if he says that, says, Hey, you know, I got $200,000 to go to, you know, big tech state or whatever. How can you look him in the eye and say, "Don't take"? Oh, that? I think he should. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think you know, he, should, I mean, I, he should go down want, the road I, to I, Ann Arbor. I, I, <laughs> well, get, hey, get your people to get it together. But know. you know, I'm an Oakland alum as well. Like I went to Oakland strictly because of the basketball team, not for a journalism department. I made no decision based on anything academic. It was purely because they went to the NCAA tournament in 2005, yeah. and so I, you know, I want him to stay too. But I also want him to get everything he wants in life because he gave, like these guys give literally everything to the university. Like Blake Lampman, we put him together with duct tape and band aids before every game. Like his body, he gave every piece of his body that he could give. He gave his guts to the program. So you know, I want these guys to get everything they can get. Well, so- and and basket, they're supposed to be set up for a success by committing to this program. Um, what was it like to be in the middle of all this? I mean, have you ever experienced anything like this? I mean, what can you compare it to for those of us who weren't there uh, right in the middle of it? Uh, and look, so you, you mentioned before I do television for Detroit City, which has a huge, you know, a huge following. You know, you've been down there. Um, the the TV ratings for Detroit City are the highest in the USL. Mm-hmm. The, they're the highest. So obviously there's a pretty big, you know, microscope on that. This was different because it was Kentucky. Because it was the NCAA tournament, uh, because Learfield is tapping into your, you know, your calls live and sending it around the country, and and you know, and I'll tell you the the biggest moment in all this, it just just in terms of nerves, was when at the under four timeout, it looked like we had a very very good chance to win, and you start thinking during the commercial break, this is going to be the biggest moment in the history of Oakland University, not Oakland basketball, Oakland University as a whole. And whatever I say at the buzzer is going to be tied for that exactly. forever. Oh, Are you thinking of something already? Yeah. 
you know so so you start thinking about the the gravity of that moment and stuff like that what it's going to be going forward it's it was it was a lot it was a lot to think were about. you thinking about the call because this is not only going to be something that people hear from oakland it's going to be across all the over country. the nation I mean, you yeah. say Cinderella's slipper fits, oh, God, or no. I mean, do you no, try? No, not you, ML. I wouldn't. I wouldn't come up with something like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe when they make the final four, they can afford me, <laughs> since they're saving all that nil money on these other guys. But I mean, there's you've got to be thinking, say something memorable. Don't be corny, right? But be dramatic. But I mean, how do you? When do you start preparing for that? It doesn't sound like you were preparing for that on the bus to the arena. But at some point in the I, game, you're like, hey, wait a minute. You this know, you, you, moment. you you think of it a little bit, you know, in the days leading up, because that's the magic of this thing, right? That's what makes it so much fun. You start thinking about it a little bit, but you know, when you when you boil it all down, it's um it's something where we got to the under four media timeout. I just kind of tried to say what people were thinking. And I was trying to to say what people who would hear this across the country that had never heard of Oakland before. I think it's in California, which I'm sure you're sick of hearing yeah, that. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But um, you know, you just kind of think about it that way. And, you know, that's why I came up with the, you know, America, Oakland just busted your brackets. Cause you know everyone picks Kentucky yeah, sure. and stuff like yeah. that. So that was kind of pretty it. good. Yeah. And then I mean, that's you, your Al Michaels moment. Absolutely. And then, you know, I, I tried to break it down too. I said Oakland University is going on. The Kentucky Wildcats are going home. And that was that was the one because it kind of as an Oakland alum like that kind of gave me goosebumps to say like we did it man like we beat kentucky yeah what uh the plane ride home huge, i mean huge they, a bus when you're a mid-major a bus? You're oh really the, in a you're, bus to pittsburgh uh when you're a mid-major and you're within five hours of the site uh, they will not provide a charter jet for you oh that's bullshit so that's another advantage for the cake eaters yeah well, or they, I guess they, they the provided, tobacco chewers. Well, they provided buses for Kentucky too because they were within five hours. But oh. they but they sent their support staff and they took their own <laughs> charter jet uh, to Pittsburgh. That's, that's not, they sent the band. The they any, sent the band on the, the bus. Inequality, man. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Okay, so the bus ride yeah. back. Um, does it? Were they dejected because you know this? Were they were so close, or yes. were they? They were. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was still. And then I'll tell you this too. I had kind of, by the time we got back to campus, I had kind of made my peace with it a little bit. But then you watch NC State win. Yeah. And then you're thinking, oh, yeah. We were there. Like we were right there. We had the ball. Like this could be us right now. And then you watch Marquette go four for 31 (laughs) against three, you know, from three in in Houston. You're like, well, we would have, we would have beat Marquette too. They were four for 31 from three. And then you just start putting it together like that. And you're thinking, man, what could have been? So so is NC State's run, is it, is it going to be over here against Purdue? Well, I mean, can Zach Eady muscle up DJ Burns? Yes. You think so? I, I mean, I, I really do. I, I really, really. Chris, do. I was asking Chris Conway about that. He's like, you. The problem with going up against him is you can't get around him. Like, there's no way to get around him. It isn't so much the height. I just Eady's again, a good passer too, though. Yeah, uh, no, oh, you he mean is. you can't get around Eady is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. just is Eady going to shoot 20 free throws again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And honestly. That guy should be shooting 40 free throws. Every time he has the ball, he gets hacked because yeah. he's just so big. But he so. makes them. Well, Neil, I know you have to go do your show. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what people are going to hear on Woodward Sports. Yeah, absolutely. Woodward Sports, uh, it's myself. It's called Big D Energy. The D stands for Detroit, obviously. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. It stands for That's not what it stands for when Sean's here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it's myself and Darren McCarty. Uh, we're over there on Woodward Sports. Uh Growth has been incredible. Uh, the largest digital sports network uh, in Michigan, uh, really kind of pushing the ticket at what they're doing and stuff like that. So I like it. Uh, we are we're having a lot of fun as always. So check that out, Woodward Sports YouTube channel. I love yeah. Mac. What what's the biggest thing that you uh, would disagree with McCarty on? Is there something in general? Um, what is the biggest? Because he's so intense. You're a little bit laid back. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's um, I, when I get when I get upset like with the Red Wings right now. Mm-hmm. The secondary scoring just went away for yeah. whatever. That's why they're losing, right? Strong, they, Comper. All these guys, I was told, like, I was told they have the most double digit scores in the league. Well, what happened to them? Yeah. And so, like, you know, we kind of butt heads about that a little bit. But Wait, no. so he, he, when it comes to the wings, he's the calm one. Correct. That's Correct. because, uh, because he he's, you know, he's kind of a using the weed. 
<laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Was he cheering for Kentucky? Because he's like bluegrass, whatever. No, kind he, of, no. he he loves Oakland. He loves Campy. We we have had Camp on the show and say he loves Campy. I once again, you cannot find someone who doesn't really who doesn't like him or the guys. It's it's crazy. It's, yeah. I mean, they they were America's team for that day, that the weekend really. No, it was it was an incredible run, and uh, appreciate you having me on here, guys. It, no, it's, it is. It's, Mark, it's great to catch back yeah, up with you. We were together at ESPN Radio for a while. That's right. There. Yep. It was a lot of fun. This yeah, is, you uh, you have lost about sixty pounds, and I think I found them. <laughs> hey, I dropped them. Yeah, yeah. I, you didn't have to pick them up, though. <laughs> I know. Well, this is as close as Spartans have gotten to great basketball success this season. So we appreciate you yeah. bringing some of that magic down here to Red Shovel headquarters. So no, absolutely, I'll appreciate the time. Man. So Thank Neil you. Rule, you can listen to him on Woodward Sports. You can hear him at DCFC games and and calling those games, which are on TV now. They have more more games on ESPN. Two is it than anybody else? Uh, well, we we actually we have a deal. Uh, some it's of the games CBS. are on ESPN Plus. We will be on CBS Linear this right. this Saturday yeah. at two o'clock. That's right. So that's channel sixty two, and you yep. can also watch them on ESPN. And of course, catch them with the Golden Grizzly. So Neil Rule, great great to have you here, man. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks, guys. As some call him the Neil Rule, but I call him the Golden Rule. It's, God, it's not going to work. It's, I, I I am going to shoehorn this thing in. This people will be talking about this. It was good seeing Neil again. It's been been a long time since the uh, the, the horrid days of, like he said, 105.1. And um, apparently since he had his lap band surgery. from what I know. Said. Yeah, um, Boy, uh, he, he told me a fascinating story as to how he lost the weight and why he lost the weight. And it's because he's on TV. I mean, that's a big part of it, right? I think. Uh, speaking of sports, we have a new advertiser, correct? Yes, sport, we do. A sports-themed advertiser. That's right. We have Come Play Detroit is one of our new sponsors. And, you know, I got to tell you, folks, I deal with a lot of people in Detroit and elsewhere who like to play games. But if you really want to play with me, there's no better place to play than Come Play Detroit. Come Play Detroit is my choice for softball and volleyball, but they offer a wide range of sports and they play all year round, offering everything from one day tournaments to seasons that last eight to 10 weeks. You can sign up as an individual as part of a small group, or as a full team. Either way, Come Play Detroit's friendly staff will help you find the right fit. And if you know me, you know I like a good deal. So <laughs> go to ComePlayDetroit.com and use promo code SOUL when you sign up to get 10% off your first registration. It's a great way to get in the game and to support our show. So please, Come Play Detroit. In fact, we're going to be playing softball Ooh. in about two weeks if the rain ever stops, because we play at Belle Isle, and when the rain comes, it can... Can be a little muddy out there. I, I think uh, I think you'll like this new read, by the way. Oh, really? You're ready? Yeah, it's for Luke. Ready? Uh, if it's Luke, I like it. Maybe you're a big time city official who can travel on the people's dime. Oh, damn. Maybe you're a political contributor who gets hooked up with government contracts. That happens. Well, it's good for you, but it's bad for the rest of us. Now, if you're not among the swells looking to line your pockets with taxpayer money, if you're someone who actually works for a living, call financial specialist Luke Nowacki, 248-663-4748. He'll discuss strategies to grow your assets from annuities to individual retirement accounts to college Savings. So make that call right now. After all, you've got kids and kleptocrats to feed. Luke Nowacki, 248 663 4748. Because when you call Luke, he'll make it all about you, Bobby Ferguson. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Bonaic Wealth. Stand member F I N R A S I P C Bonaic Wealth. Sing to separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent Bonaic Wealth. Think. And if you can see clearly now, it's not because the rain is gone. It's because, like Mark and I, you've had LASIK, and you actually have better than 2020 vision. You have 2015 vision, which means when you're looking distance-wise, you can see clearly. And there's one reason why. Because you make a choice to get rid of those glasses, those contacts, all those things that you carry around to help you see. If you haven't done that yet, I recommend that you talk to Dr. Yaldo because the reasons people give not to get or to avoid a life-changing vision correction procedure are pretty much these. I'm too busy, which is usually not true. I can't afford it, which is not the case because you save in the long run. Too dangerous, which isn't true at all. LASIK and lens replacement are as safe as any in medicine. These procedures spare you things like eye infections, cysts on your eyelids, all kinds of nasty things because you're not sticking your fingers in your eyes all the time like you would if you were still wearing contacts. And then people say, too painful. There's no pain. There's brief minor discomfort, if that, or 
I'm scared. Now, now that's valid, but in Dr. Yaldo's experienced hands, you shouldn't be afraid. He's done more of these procedures than anyone in Detroit. So if you're 40 or so and your near vision is getting worse, go see Dr. Yaldo before you get thoroughly annoyed with reading glasses. Lens replacement is just that. You're replacing their natural lenses because they run out of gas in midlife, and Dr. Yaldo's bifocal implants give you precise vision for seeing the small stuff and sitting in the last seat in the bleachers. Now, if you're watching us, if you're a Patreon subscriber, we appreciate that. You see I'm wearing some reading glasses for this because yeah. with the LASIK, when you get it young like I did, eventually your near vision doesn't go so well. Dr. Yaldo has a procedure that can address that. So you can get rid of these things forever so think of it no more glasses contacts or readers ever one of these days i'm gonna get in there but i'm too busy that not true just do it get it done good man good good advice the evaluation is of course free so call 1-800-398-EYES or yaldoeyecenter.com no more glasses or contacts or readers forever ever ever, ever. ever. and before we move on to uh, geek of the week look look who we found Oh, I, I thought that was our Look at him. geek of the week. No, Hello? It's Sean? What, who's your geek of the week? <laughs> uh, well, Sean, uh, since you asked, I, yeah, I love how Sean sets up. It's good to he's see a, you, too. He's a true broadcast professional. <laughs> yeah, let's just get going. Did you know Neil Rule? <laughs> Neil, when he does games for, uh, for, for some of the soccer leagues, they fly him down to Fort Lauderdale so he can call them from a studio so they sound fantastic. That's uh, that's pretty nice, isn't it? You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> no, I do not. Get your ass to Fort Lauderdale, ASAP. It's been What's more than it? like a week since you flew somewhere. Aren't you feeling yeah. a little freaked out? No, no, this is the end of my travel. I, I won't travel again probably until, uh, well, football season. So, I like how you're in a big hurry today. What are you in a hurry for? No, I'm not in a big hurry. Let's I may go going. to Vegas this summer for NBA Summer League. I've done that the last three years, but I don't know. The fan base of the Pistons may be so despondent and so demoralized that What's we might the not point? Even, we might. Plus, it's uh, apparently the worst draft in 20 years, according to NBA general managers. So who knows? Maybe that's not worth the trip. Wait, worst, worst draft? Oh, talent-wise coming out of college? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Around the Europe? Yeah. Huh. So the Pistons yeah. could get the number one overall pick again and get a bum? Uh, well, I wouldn't okay. say that, but but maybe not somebody who's all that good. Oh well, that's that sounds a, like a bum. That's a reason to root for him. Yeah, yeah. no, that's that's not a that's not that's a word for you. That's not really a word for me. <laughs> okay, God, so judgmental. A, well, on that note, <laughs> oh man, the geeks have inherited the earth. Did I do that? What a dork! Does him wanting to play with us again mean that he's? Turning into a geek, or we're turning into cool guys. This week's geeks could be starring in a new movie or a remake that be, could be called Weekend at Ashtabula. These are two Ohio women who were accused of driving the body of a deceased 80 year old man to a bank to withdraw money from his account before, as a courtesy, dropping his body off at a hospital. Karen Cashbaum. Well, that's and, a new. That's a new one. Yeah, that's well, it's pretty creative. Let's talk about curb service. You know, hey, we're going to get you Jesus to the hospital. Christ. We just got to stop at the bank. Um, <laughs> maybe they were worried about a copay. I don't know, a deductible or something like that. But Karen Cashbaum and Lauren B. Ferralo were charged last month in Ashtabula with gross abuse of a corpse and theft from a person in a protected class. And this is according to Ashtabula Municipal Court records. Police say the women were called. Uh, police say they were called Monday evening and told that two women had dropped off a body at the Ashtabula County Medical Center emergency room without identifying the person or themselves. A few hours later, one of them contacted the hospital with information on the deceased, who was then known as 80-year-old Douglas Layman of, and I just love saying it, Ashtabula. <laughs> Officers responded to Layman's residence and made contact with these two women who told them they found him dead earlier at the home where all three of them lived. Of course, only two of them lived there after that. Police said that with the help of a third unnamed person, perhaps one of those rascals who spent the weekend at Bernie's, they mm. placed Layman in the front seat of his car and drove to a bank where they withdrew an undisclosed amount of money from his account. And I think the undisclosed amount is probably every penny that he had in his account. 
His body was then placed in the vehicle in such a manner that it would be visible to the bank staff oh in order yeah. to make the withdrawal. A, a for effort. Yeah. Now, I don't know that... Um, I don't know whether he was wearing sunglasses or not, but uh, <laughs> and a windbreaker. But yeah, the, the the bank had previously allowed this as long as he was accompanied by these women. At any rate, they'd been in a relationship, a living relation with huh. Ship with him for many years, and they said it was normal for them to take money from his account. But they weren't able to explain why they went there that day. Mm. Uh, an officer tells the Associated Press, allegedly they wanted to pay some bills, but outside of that, there wasn't a specific motivation provided. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. So these women are facing charges, and that's why, in the meantime, I don't know, should we call them guilty of being our Geek of the Week or just... <laughs> guilty. Can I tell you two, the two things I know about Ashtabula, Ohio? You can tell me anything you want about okay. Ashtabula because I'm in love Sean? with Ashtabula. Sean, do you know anybody who is from Ashtabula? Because you should. Bums, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's two bums. I, I, one is Urban Meyer. I mean, that's where Urban Meyer's from. Really? Right? Yep, Ashtabula. And then the other is the former owner of the Ra oh boy, was it the Rangers, who is now a career criminal and convicted of a bunch of... Um, of uh, wire fraud and whatnot. John Spano. Have you ever heard of John Spano? No, he tried to buy the Islanders. Yes. Yeah, yes. That, maybe that's what it is. You're right. He tried yeah. to buy the Islanders, and then there was a bunch of money problems, and he's in prison pretty much for the rest of his life. So that's the two things I know about Ashtabula. Yeah, isn't that one of those deals where he was faxing over confirmation of his assets, and it was like yeah. cut and pasted, but yep. no one really... Yep. Oh, wow. I'm total clown. So maybe the whole city should be thinking. Ashtabula. Well, that, that means we may have to have a field trip. <laughs> Are you bored, Sean? No, not at all. This is okay, great. great. <laughs> <laughs> See you again. There's an all night party in room 7609. And you can dance together all night if you've got the time. That's your cue. Well, I'm. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm. I'm trying to catch up with this week's uh, entry into room seven six zero nine. It was. It was suggested many many months ago by DJ Weiser, and he gave me two choices. One was Toaster, who I'd never heard of before, and the other was a deep cut from a band that I know everybody else loves, but I've never liked. Oh boy, what? Van Halen. Oh, so, cool. I can't believe you don't like Van Halen. Do not like. I bet you Sean doesn't like him either. Van Sean, Halen. do you like Van Halen? Uh, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did when I was there's, young. There's the strong take from Sean that I love. It's a little hot I, coffee I, to wake you up there in podcast. I, I did, but I, I liked him when I was okay when I was a teenager, which probably makes me uncool, but that's all right. Oh, they're very cool, man. Come on. Van Halen was never cool. They were a lot of things. I don't think they were ever cool. Uh, I got news for you. They're still cool. What? Do you know how many people in my high school had the Van Halen logo drawn on their notebooks and on their jeans? Yeah, but those weren't cool people. I mean, the cool people were drawn talking heads or the, the Ramones or whatever. That There's a difference, right? I, I beg I it. Disagree. I think I disagree big time. Many of the people who hung out on the escort at Gross Point South were cool. And yeah, I big was, fans I of Fog Hat, cool. by the way. I wasn't cool. If you listen to Journey or Van Halen or any of those kind of groups, uh, triumph. You, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't cool. Rush. That was Rush. a shot. Yeah. That was a shot. Scratch acid. <laughs> well, DJ Weiser, this is a very cool tune. And like Sean, it's talk and it's cheap. Shades are dope, the dogs are sweet Sky music, reggae, it's a brand new beat It's the same old tunes on your new AV And I heard some crap about unity That only works when the beers are free Talk is cheap Well, you're coming through the plan and there's something to me
damn, I want to get my pork pie hat on. That was that was awesome. <laughs> no, I, I like ska though. Sean, do you like ska music? Uh, no. <laughs> How, how's that? How's that for a take? Was that Oingo Boingo? No, it's it's it, you could be <laughs> you could be forgiven for confusing them with the specials or somebody, but not Oingo Boingo. <laughs> I just knew he was not going to like that song. I don't know why. I just knew it. So English well, because beat. Because that's not a great song. I mean, that's why you. What's right? wrong with it? It's fun. You don't like fun? I don't know if that's fun. I mean, hey, you know what? It's uh, it's uh, everybody has their own idea what fun is. So there you go. Sean, what I thought you would like about ska is it's one of the forms of music, one of the genres that is most known for bringing the races together. A lot of these bands, you see black guys and white guys fronting them. In fact, the apparel is mainly black and white suits with oh, skinny ties and pork pie hats. And, no, that, that's what and Boss and, was for, right? Boss Gags. <laughs> he, he, he's, the, he's the one that uh, brought everybody together. Or Bobby Carpenter. What Bus. you do for love. Bus. There you go. How about something like that? You know, we'll when, be here before we started. You could have changed when, the song. When we decided to open up Room Seven Six or Nine to different different genres and different, I, I I I had some trepidation, but it's worked out great. But I never ever, in my wildest imagination, thought I'd hear the words Boz Skaggs <laughs> mentioned on this show or in this segment. And Especially after that song, <laughs> go uh, go watch a, a, a video somewhere of Lowdown playing and look at the crowd dancing, and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Not a bad uh, song. What do you think the percentage of songs on Seven Six Zero Nine Sean likes? Like, what do you think the percentage is? Well, there's that one song that he brought on that he don't listen to the first forty five seconds of, and oh, then that's right. <laughs> he liked that much of it, <laughs> so uh, I would say uh, I'm probably like twenty. 20- 20% or yeah, so? That's yeah. what I would say. It's about 20. 20%? One, <laughs> one out of every five. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. I was thinking 2%. You know what I do like? I like your shirt today, although I don't understand why you don't wear our show's swag. <laughs> because I wear it out in the public. I'm an ambassador. I'm an influencer. <laughs> you may have seen me at some uh, high high uh, high profile cocktail parties uh, rocking the ML uh, the hoodie. Detroit swag. Rocking the, yeah, okay. Which, which right now, you can only get by being one of our top level Patreon subscribers. But we will I mean, I, some cool I wear it dutifully every, every show. It's so. not a uniform. You don't have to wear it every no, week. No, I try, I try. It's an acknowledgement of my love for this, uh, for you too, and for the show. And I, for yourself. Now, Sean. No, not so much. Because you've been avoiding us, I haven't been able to give you this this gift that I brought Wait. back for you what from, is that? from Ireland. It's, it's, a, if you, if you're watching on Patreon, you can see it's a soul classics vinyl t-shirt that I got from the pennies on O'Connell street in downtown Dublin. That's the same exact shirt you got me though. Yeah. You well, a discount. Was it, was it a BOGO? Well, as, uh, as people will notice, it's, uh, three euro 50 so i i broke the bank but no i, I thought know, that's almost i would rather you didn't get us anything that's more insulting that you got us the same thing because it was only 350 it's that's 350 i'll never no, have to that, spend on a nice pint of beer he, he's all the way he's on the other side of the world they're not quite but you know a, a fair amount of way and he's actually thinking about us mark so I, he should be nice. thinking about us we did a show that week that's nice. That's, that's nice that he did and then he carted it all the way over the atlantic back that, that's so right that, that's, what a hero those t-shirts aren't light, you know, except for... I thought about you guys when I was in Florida. I didn't bring anything back because it was cheap and the same thing. Well, I I thought that you guys were both soul classics, and so I wanted to get you uh, something that... I think, that, that's, uh, gra- I think that's great. It's the thought that counts. It's very nice of you. Thank now, you. I'm very hey, speak, appreciative. Speaking of Ireland, and this is the part... Uh, there we go. Of the sh- this is the part of the show where I rely on Mark <laughs> to tell me... What? To really update me, give me a uh, life lessons, especially about pop culture. Okay, tell me what what for a couple of things. Two shows. Tell me what we think of these. The three body problem. I don't like it. Okay, what about the tourist? Which the second season is shot and and takes place in Ireland. I haven't watched it. Okay, well there we go. How far did you make in the three body problem? I haven't started yet. I want to know oh. from you if it's worth starting. I assume Mike oh, yeah. is not. Everybody loves it. It's the guy that did um, Game of Thrones. Is it D.B. Weiss, I think? 
I, I watched a half hour of it and I went, I have no idea what any of this is. I'm done. And just got out of it because I'm not going to waste any more time on it. You got to, you got to hook me quick. Kind of like trying to get through one of my columns. It, um, it's a waste. It's a waste of time. Don't, don't beat yourself up like that, but you know, you got to hook everybody right away or else there's too many choices to go yeah. elsewhere. Let, let us beat you up. Three body ah. problem is also what people call this podcast. I think it's a one money. That's what the golden rule calls it. Yeah, it's, so, so it's me. No, so here's sure. here's what I wanted. Say, to, I didn't say which draw. body. Here's what I wanted to get Sean, and we get too much glare on that. Yes, cannot see what that is. Uh, Looks like a dress. What it's, is that? It's a. Uh, if you're it's a watching green this shirt, and it's got a uh, shamrock on it. Yeah. So it says it's, it's a green sweatshirt that says "Happy Go Lucky" on it. I wanted to get this for Sean Aww. because I thought it really captures his. Uh, <laughs> it captures his vibe. They did not have it in a double XL, so I could not. Hey, some some problems. people think I'm, uh, you know, pretty laid back and chill. So there you go. I do. I think that's your one. That's the only thing I don't like about you. You're too laid back. I want you yeah. to take a strong takes. <laughs> Those people are usually the ones who say, "Don't get the defibrillator." He's just laid back and chill. He's just tired. Yeah, he's just he's just resting. <laughs> the strong takes. What is a strong take? He's just resting his eyes. I don't know on anything. <laughs> making make a making a. Making a, it, a a judgment is that it? Yeah, no, no it, it's you know it's funny I say that because I really hate that um, about well, sports shows in general. I hate that they just have takes to have takes because it's kind of pointless. Because nobody really cares that much about things. Like when they yeah, call they, guys a nincompoop. They don't really have takes though, right? They're, 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 they have nothing to say. There's exactly. But I mean, some you asked me about two shows there, and I had an opinion on both of them. I didn't waffle. It's oh, it's like it's like the doofus. Who, I saw this doofus. Uh, the, doofus. Whatever. I don't know. It's, now, now who's calling names? <laughs> that's, tr- troll. That's well, a great name. He knows, doofus. Because he because he knows better, and he's figured out how to monetize just sort of a certain specific kind of hate. Can, Maybe not can hate, we get his number? Being, oh, we don't a, want to monetize hate. We'd like to monetize his podcast. It's being okay. being a being a douche, but no, he was. He was so happy because, you know, there's been a lot of talk about women's college basketball, rightly so. You know, last night there were a couple of great games, and the numbers are on the rise, maybe less so for the WNBA, but it's, 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 it's increasing. So the trend of women's college basketball, and even the WNBA over the last four or five years, the numbers have been going up. Sure. They're still they're not where the men's are. But you see these folks, and this guy was one of them, who just they take a glee in pointing out that there's still such a difference. Like, it, it's a it's a shot at certain kind of people who want to say that the sports are equal, but nobody's saying that. Well, it's, okay, I, I was just going to say that's my pet peeve about them. They're different sports. Can we stop comparing them in general? Overall, yeah, no. I mean, and it's sports. true that women's college basketball is has gained a little bit more attraction in our popular culture. Is it where the men's is? No, but, but it doesn't so help. Why? It doesn't help them when Caitlin Clark comes out and says uh, there's more interest in the women's tournament this year. Then there is the men's tournament, or if you watch Good Morning America or CBS This Morning, and they're way more excited and gleeful uh, talking about women's basketball than men's basketball, almost like they're pushing an agenda. I can understand how that rubs people the wrong way. That being said, I watched Caitlin Clark last night. She was really, really amazing. I mean, she's a great shooter. No, um, no but, but but there is more I, I, interest. But so not, there's more social media interest. There may it may not be traditional television viewers. But the the women's game has bigger stars right now. Their coach, their this the except for who who did the men's game have? Tom Izzo, maybe. Well, Greg Cal- Campy, Calipari. I mean, Calipari, Danny Hurley. Yes, Danny Hurley. Kim, I mean, people Kim know who Bul- Dan- Kim Mulkey's become a cultural touchstone in the last for all the wrong reasons. No, but but that's beside the point. I'm just saying she's out there, and it's sort of interesting. And the women's game has a few stars that are. Oh, wait, well, wait a sec. Who do you think people know more? Do they know Kim Mulkey or Danny Hurley more? Uh, Kim Mulkey. You think so? Really? Yeah, in part because she got out there and went after the Washington Post. I right? don't know, and, uh, man. I, I still think people more people in America would know who Danny Hurley is. I, I think more people might would know Tom Izzo. Oh, John without Cal- a doubt. Or, or, or John Cal- 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 I'm just thinking of coaches. Danner. I'm just thinking of coaches in the final four. Yeah, Matt, I think maybe I think not Mulk- Matt Painter. You know, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, who's the big, who's a big, who's a bigger star in a men's game than Caitlin Clark or, well, or I think uh, I, even, even Angel Reese. But I think now it's DJ like Burns. It's DJ Burns. It's um, it's Zach Eady. I mean, everybody knows who Zach Eady Z- is. Zach, Zach Eady's club, but he's not Caitlin Clark. No, but no. The, Ka- so Caitlin the, Clark is a top. bigger star than Zach Eady for sure. You think so? 
not physically, yeah. but I mean, she's doing State Farm commercials, and he's doing advertisements for Clef Palette. No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! What? <laughs> Oh my God! I don't know. No, that's interesting. I, I I thought of you, Mark, but no, it's it's a lot like what it's it's a lot like the NBA. The NBA has lost a lot of viewers over the years, but for whatever reason, they remain their their social media engagement is bigger than any other sport except for the NFL. So it's is women's college it, basketball social media engagement though. Is it is it the kind of social media engagement they want? Because a lot of it mm, is, is hate. Not necessarily, right? Yeah. No, it's back. In, I mean, I get, I don't know. That's that's a good question. But I will say this: you know what? Hel- you know what helps the women's game <laughs> are really weird things, like um, who's the star freshman for Notre Dame? I don't even remember her name, but she uh, was playing with her nose ring, and they're like, "You can't have that nose ring in," and she played with it anyway. And then she had to sit out for four minutes. So there's a video of her getting her nose ring taken out. It took them four minutes to get it out with pliers. Weird stuff like that makes you pay attention to the game. The fact that the three point line was shorter in Portland is no, just for sure bonkers. Yeah. Nine inches it. short, I thought. I know it's not even close. They played four games on it, or that they had an official officiating a game of a school she went to, which isn't like nobody knew about that. It's just these weird things will generate interest in the game. I and, think and as much as Caitlin Clark will. And then Mulkey is wearing you know these outfits with sequins all over, right? Yeah. So it's kind of. No, at least she's uh, wearing a suit, right, John? Yeah, you know who's yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you know who's fallen off a little bit. It's interesting is is Connecticut's coach Gino uh, Ariama. Yeah, Ariama, who used to be more of a figure out there, I, he's receded a little bit. But uh, anyway, no, there's just a lot to talk about, and I think that's why there's coverage of it because there's a lot to talk about, even if it doesn't show up in the numbers, uh, the traditional television ratings compared to the men. Well, I bet I bet you last night's game, seven o'clock nothing really to compete against by the way because it's monday night at seven i I wouldn't be surprised if that did close to eight nine million don't you think well let's look that up Uh, i'll I'll just be the research guy here it did did 10 i think the championship game did 10 million but there was so much hype around this game that i I would bet on average probably actually that might be too high maybe maybe seven and a half million because i think caitlin clark's games are doing about three and a half four um now the rest of the tournament and the women's side were doing about one and a half too. Um, uh, which are, seven which are million great numbers. Watched Iowa, uh, seven million watched seven? Iowa, Colorado. Really? I don't know about that. No, I'm just looking at okay. this. Yeah. All right. I mean that those are phenomenal numbers. No, the guess, the guess what well, the numbers aren't out yet, but the guess for last night was going to be eight million. Okay. And so, yeah, so, I mean, it's growing, but I, once again, stop comparing the two because they're very, very different games. They're played very differently. They're different rules. You know, the clock's different. The ball's different. Stop comparing them to each other. We don't compare uh, the British basketball league to the NBA, right? Because they're different. They're different sports. That's it. That's all I got. Thanks for your feedback. And that's room seven six oh nine. Where we, where we, I was expecting more from Sean, but we talk about no, no. Uh, I was just looking. It's really music. interesting. The highest rated games. These are and the highest rated basketball. games. You have to go all the way back to the early nineties. What like UConn, Tennessee, Tennessee. Yep, UConn, Tennessee, uh, Texas Tech. Remember Cheryl Swoops? No, but at least at least games now are competitive. You know, you don't have UConn beating everybody by what thirty points. You just have the UConn men beating everybody by thirty points. Oh. That was a terrible game. Well, yeah. against Illinois, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it was kind of enjoyable, though, because it was so bonkers. It was crazy. Yeah. Anyway. Crazy, man. Crazy. Thanks, Sean. Well, we love, no, thank you. We love to get your <laughs> suggestions for obscure bands or deep cuts from your favorite band or your take on women's professional and collegiate sports here in Room 7609. You can send them to us at mlsoulofdetroit at gmail dot com um just briefly on ska if anybody saw renfield which Mm. was written by the son of mark ridley who runs comedy castle hilarious movie one of the subplots in it is that ska sucks (laughs) and early on renfield when he goes to a uh, a group therapy session the woman who has the abusive boyfriend when she tells about how horrible he is she caps it off by saying, and he really likes Ska. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Ska. Yeah. Otherwise, the movie. Regardless of what Sean thinks. Nails it. 
So the Toasters, by the way, they are an American ska band. They sound like they're British because the front man, who's the only consistent member of the band, is British, Mm. was a buddy of Joe Jackson, who sometimes appears on their music under the pseudonym Stanley Turpentine and helped produce some of their stuff. Great band. Check them out. DJ Weiser, thank you for sending it our way. DJ Weiser is still recovering, by the way, because he recently completed listening to all 250 of our episodes. I mean, back thank you, but what's wrong with back, you? To back, to back, to back, to back. Apparently, he's allowed to have access to the internet in his cell. <laughs> he's so, a good dude, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's very cool. So we do appreciate it. And he's also Can, a Patreon. Oh, yes, yes, Sean, supporter. I'm sorry. I just would love to hear, is he really going out with him maybe next week? You mentioned Joe Jackson, right? So, Sean, I know that, uh, <laughs> I know that uh, a keen uh, memory is not one of your many superpowers, but we have played Joe Jackson on this but show not before. That, but not that song. And not that, a human no. emergency break. So. Do you like how we stopped everything just to hear what you had to say? Not that song. You know, it's so great to have a... Uh, you had a five-minute delay. <laughs> What's yeah, going on? It's great to have a, a broadcast professional on the show, <laughs> but Neil Rule has left, so we have Sean <laughs> now. Let's try, let's try this and, again. So. Anything else, Sean? Oh, he's just shaking his head no. Okay. Yeah. Well, this segment's going to go really fast because this is where we thank people who have made an individual donation by going to our website and hitting the paypal or the venmo donation button because nobody did and i thought for our birthday our 250th episode somebody might send us a little something but but no no it did not play out that way perhaps they will consider joining us and sustaining the show by becoming a patreon member and joining our soul patrol for five bucks we call it the please please let us get what we want level you get this show without the insertion ads you get to watch the show you get the video and you get it before anybody else. That's just for five measly bucks a month. For 15 bucks a month, the big mouth strikes again level, you get ad-free show, first crack at the show, video of the show, and once a month you get a bonus episode. We just posted last week the March bonus episode, which is Ask Erica. It's Erica Erickson answering your questions, assuming you're some of the dysfunctional screwheads who write to advice columnists. Erica, Mark, and I help people find a way to a better life. It's really just one of the many services we provide. And for 15 bucks a month, way cheaper than therapy, you can get our help. $25 a month, that's the work as a four-letter word level. You get all the great stuff and a free copy of the Kwame Sutra. My friend Delane is a work as a four-letter word month uh, subscriber, and I saw her this weekend. Thank she you. recommended a great show. Sean will like it. It's a British show. It's called Won't Get Fooled Again, starring Joanna Lumley, former Bond girl, former star of Absolutely Fabulous. So that's one that you might want to check out. And I told her, you know, I'm supposed to send out these autographed copies of the uh, Kwame Sutra. And she said, that's okay. I've already got two. Don't. Oh, wow. Don't buy this. Well, wouldn't you like another? She said, no, I'm good. <laughs> Can't get rid of those things. It's kind of hurtful. Thanks. I have some feedback. Oh, and one more. Oh, one there's more, more feedback? For okay, 60 great. bucks a oh, month, oh, okay. you can be a handsome devil and get some of our great ML Soul of Detroit swag. You may have seen Erica on my Twitter feed wearing one of our Soul of Detroit t-shirts. You can get one by joining us at the $60 a month level, and you get all the other great stuff. So uh, please support us. There's a link to our Patreon subscriber page on our website, which is mlsoulofdetroit.com. Sean, will you be a judge for me here? I want you to judge something. Go ahead. Um, I saw a tweet from Mr. Elric that I thought was ridiculous, and I want to know if it was ridiculous or not. Is it the one where I said congratulations to Michigan hockey for? Oh yeah, yeah. Because you can always, knowing you, it's always just congratulations. Um, so some guy, and I'll admit he was he was trolling you by putting the final, the Michigan uh, Michigan State hockey final, five to two, Michigan advances to the Frozen Four after winning the regional, and um, he just said another loss by Sparty when it rains it pours, and this is Elric's response, which I got kind of mad at, but I want I want I want your opinion on it. Oh, Elric wrote, "I know how hmm, this is going to go." Hmm. <laughs> which any tweet that starts with hmm. Michigan State is 4-2 and two against Michigan this year. We're regular season Big Ten champs and Big Ten tournament champs. U of M has a great team and played a fantastic game, but hasn't won any hardware yet. Maybe they will, but right now it feels like you're celebrating 
11 seconds early again, which is a reference to the snap. What, 10, years, the snap. 10 years ago? Yes, everybody's forgotten it. Yeah. Everybody. So, Sean, what, what do you make of that of that tweet? Is that uh, is that thin-skinned Elric, or is he right? No, it's, it's the, well, I mean, he's presenting facts. It's, it's not that he's right or wrong. He's just being a fan. That's okay. He's That's factually they, incorrect, though. They did win hardware. Winning a regional is winning hardware. They give you a trophy for it. Yeah, yeah get into a Final Four. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So that part's wrong. So is he being thin-skinned? No, he's being a fan. The fans are thin-skinned, especially when it comes to rivalries, right? Mm, okay. I liked where Sean said he's being factual. But you weren't. You weren't factual. Well, he it's was, just, except for he, he, yeah, he so shouldn't, I, yeah, shouldn't yeah, have said hard right, let me Let me he ask just, you this then, Sean. He, dis, he dismissed the Final Four, which he would never do with his basketball program, right? So exactly. That's, that, that's the hypocrisy. Yeah, so well, that's that, like saying Izzo's only won one thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, when you're on multiple regional champions, when you're one of the best programs in the country, winning one championship in 30 years isn't good enough. But why? I mean, why can't you be happy that state had a great year? Yeah. I was. In fact, were you were taking shots at Michigan because they no, no, lost. No, no, no. L- so let you'd me, rather you would you let me ask you this, Sean? Would you rather your team be four and two against your rival and have your conference championship uh, and the conference tournament championship? And the duel in the D championship, or would you rather be in the Frozen Four? And having beat your rival to get there? Yeah. Oh, that absolutely. Thank you. That's so it. nobody can test that. In fact, I rest my case. The Spartan hockey players said the same thing. They'd rather be in the Final Four and give up these other things. But let's provide some more valuable context here. Please. When Michigan State won the regular season Big Ten championship, when they won the Big Ten Tournament Championship over Michigan. Mm-hmm. I just time. posted, way to go, Michigan State. Great game. I praised the Michigan fans who came to Munn for the championship game because they traveled in good numbers and they were very enthusiastic. Also, arrogant dicks, no surprise there, because the first thing they start chanting as soon as they get in Munn is UNC because Michigan State had just lost to UNC in the in the. March Madness. I'm like, your yeah, team never, wasn't even in the NIT. I've so. never seen a Spartan fan wear an Appalachian State shirt. Oh, where can I get one of those, by the way? Exactly. They so knock it off. It's just they're no they, worse than any other fans. Are they three pounds 50? Thin or, skin, or man. 350 euro. So anyway, so I post that stuff. I don't I don't shit on Michigan when they win uh, or lose unless they're playing us. You did. No, 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 no! I didn't. No, they I said, haven't won any hardware yet. No, no, but this is this is what this is where we're getting the important part. This guy posts this, drags me into it, and then starts saying, "Little brother," I'm like, well, let me explain what little brothers are like. I'm the oldest in my family. I am the big brother, and when I do something that I think is noteworthy, I don't call my relatives and say, "Hey, did you check this out?" Hey, you're taking it literal. It's just you know, a pejorative but that's, term. That that's Michigan what a little uses. brother does. A little brother says, "Look what I did, Daddy. Look what I got, Daddy." So this punk, he's the little brother. Just just like D'Antonio said, is he the little brother? He's kind of small, a little guy. And this this guy, by the so way, blinded. This guy, by, by the rage way, rage towards Michigan. Not your love for state, but no, your no. rage against Michigan. Let me no. I, Go back and read my tweet again. Michigan played a great game. They're a great team. That's not rage. That's acknowledging Frank Nazer, that goal that God, Frank Nazer good. set up, yeah. one of the finest hockey players, at, one of the finest hockey plays at any level you'll ever see. Brindley, hate him because he's about five foot one, plays like a demon, can score, is fast. Dukes, I didn't even know who Dukes was until he set like a new land speed record. He's and been on t- fire this past month. Turns out he had 25 goals. 25 goals in college hockey? That's Shit almost like low. two goals a game. The guy's a freak. Edwards, has he been in that school for like 75 years? He's great on defense. Michigan has a great hockey program. There's no questioning that. Fans are dicks. But there's a great team there, and I've acknowledged <laughs> just, that just even throw, when we beat them. shot. And I acknowledge that when we lost to them. So that's all been acknowledged. But this guy wants to drag me into yeah, this stuff. Yeah, because he knew you'd bite. No, no, no. Here's why he, he wanted to drag me into it. skinned and bite on it. Here's why he wanted to drag me into it. Why? Because he's a 12-time fantasy football champion. Well, guess what, pal? Some of us actually play sports and don't pretend we're running a team of little guys. Take it oh, yeah, because everybody that... Now you're knocking everyone that plays fantasy football. I'm offended. Yeah, it's, you know... It's, I, it, you guys who play fantasy football, well, I'm glad you have something to do when you're not masturbating. 
My God, you're so judgmental. What? It's a good hot take, though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. They're just, they're just anxious. They need to have something to do with their hands. Just celebrate your team and leave uh, stop your uh, leave your anger behind you, man. I want to celebrate my team. Let's this just attack the whole fan base. This guy dragged me into something. I respond. No, those fans who came to Mun, dicks. And Michigan hockey fans, depending on your perspective, uh, are either are, renowned. Spartan fans are all saints when they travel. Are either renowned for. Be- no, it's just it's, our players will beat you up. Just college they're either fans. renowned for being the most enthusiastic or for being the most obnoxious. And both are true. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm choking on the, uh, Sean, on the obscenity Sean, of it all. Just tell him he's wrong, please. He's wrong. By the way, did we start a second show that I'm not aware of? That I missed. Oh, I'm sorry. You put in a half hour today. Yeah, we we, 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 we you you go into overtime after 19 minutes. <laughs> Good union man. Um, so we do have some feedback. Some more feedback on my uh, on my geek of the week from a couple weeks ago. The bent carrot ads. Oh yeah, you know the bent carrot ads, folks. It's, it's working uh, for you. My carrot is. Uh, well, let's baby? just say I got a baby cat. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's clean and smooth and wet, bright orange. Oh. Gross. Uh, moving on, uh, David says, "ML, I feel your pain." Last week is your geek of the week. You expound on the shame you felt for having been targeted by bent carrot boner fixers <laughs> as part of dynamic advertising. This is a good point to point out. A place to point out. The insertion ads that come here. If you hear something that makes you uncomfortable yeah, or offends no you. It's because of your browsing history. There's an algorithm that figures out what you're most likely to like. So if you heard an ad, you're like, that's kind of creepy. You know why? Because you're kind of creepy. So I was saying, I hope these bent carrot ads haven't seen something in my browsing history. Like, oh, this guy's got a dysfunction in conjunction junction. David says, I can empathize as I have been pigeonholed by those folks on Madison Avenue. I keep getting ads calling for phallic models by an outfit <laughs> called dubbed Railroad Spike. <laughs> I mean, on, really? I'm more than a guy with a superior unit. How embarrassing. I feel so objectified. For shame, dynamic advertising, shame, shame. Anyways, good luck with Bent Carrot. I'm sure things will get better. So, <laughs> so David subtly works in. That he's an honorary member of the hung jury and that uh, Railroad Spike, you're advertising to the wrong guy because he actually is quite... Uh, that's really funny, though. Intellectually endowed and elsewhere. So uh, that's your feedback. You can send it to us at mlsolvedetroit at gmail.com. We love it when you take us to a higher level with these intellectual discourses um, or something like that. You okay over there, Sean? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> I just it, heard some rustling. Quick word for those of you who love our music beds. Those are produced by Max Prokop of the Smiths Unite, who will be playing at the Magic Bag in May. So get your tickets. I will see you there unless I see you on the softball diamond or on the volleyball court uh, with Come Play Detroit. So please remember, support our show by supporting our advertisers. When you do business with Dr. Yaldo, with Luke Nowacki, or Come Play Detroit, tell them that you got there because you found out about them from the show. And when you go to Come Play Detroit, enter the promo code SOLD. You'll get 10% off your first registration. That's real money, and we certainly support. Well, I appreciate the support. Before we go, what are you guys working on? What, what, uh, Sean, where is your attention going to go now that basketball is pretty much done? Tigers? Uh, look, Tigers on fire. Tigers opening day later this week. What else? What else do we have? Uh, the Red Wings a little bit. Wrapping up the Pistons season, which probably can't finish up soon enough. Yeah, that, that finished in November, I think. Yeah, right. So just a little bit of but the Tigers, bit of this and that. The Tigers have to be a boom for uh, for the Freep. If they keep this up, for sure they will be. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. I mean, I'm interested in them for the first time in a long time. I'm looking forward to opening day on Friday. That's going to be great. I hope the weather is good because I think that's... For those of you who... Um, who grew up like I did not being able to get tickets to opening day and hoping that your teacher would put it on a radio or maybe someone would put it on the TV. Getting to go to opening day is so special because it just feels like it's, it's the hardest ticket in town to get and you're there. And it's nice having it on a Friday. Yeah. Oh, on a Friday. Holy crap. Can you think of how crazy it's going to be? I know. I mean, it's going to be like St. Patrick's Day, Punchkey Day, Opening Day, all smushed together with the Lions tailgate. Yeah, they're coming into town undefeated. Pretty cool. And what are you working on? 
You're me? busting somebody, yeah. A uh, couple things. I, I, I'm planning to, unless somebody sees the light, write about uh, a state agency that is charging an ungodly sum to provide some public records that they should just hand over. And here's one of the... Excuse me, here's one of the crazy things about it. Governor Whitmer came into office saying that she really wanted to open government and she wanted the yeah, government right. agencies, state house, state sent the governor's office to be subject to the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, we got a long ways to go, but here's one of the things that she did do. She issued an executive order that created facilitators in different state agencies who are supposed to help you get public records quicker and cheaper when you get this this response that says, we'll get it to you in a year and it's going to cost you a million dollars. So I'm trying to get these records. I find out who the facilitator is in this agency. I say, hey, we've hit a wall here. You're supposed to help dislodge these records. Can you please help me? It took them like a week or two to get back to me. Huh. Then once they got back to me, it took another week or two for them to respond. And then they basically said, can't help you. So I'm, I may write about that this huh. weekend. If not, I'm looking into uh, a, a politician, a candidate who's got a very, let's just say, um, interesting perspective on some of the people that they deal with based on um, That's very cryptic. who they are. It's really so, cryptic. Uh, so, yeah. So, Sean's on board. Give people some more information yes. about who's going to appear on the ballot so you Always. know who you're voting for. Because one of our goals is to give people the information they need to make the best decision for them and for all of us, really. So, a couple irons in the fire there. Beautiful. Love it. And uh, I got nothing going on. So that's it? No. Don't ask me. No. Okay. <laughs> well, you have, have the have final have four on? in hockey to look forward to. Frozen, yeah. Yeah, Frozen no way. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see. Uh, you, you were telling me. Everybody can send their tweets and troll you. Yeah, you, you were telling me, like a true Wolverine fan, how you have no chance whatsoever. But I'm telling you, dude. It's BC? Oh, come I'm on. This is Michigan's third trip in a row to the Frozen Four. They have more top-end, high-end talent, deeper than anybody. The only reason Michigan State beat them in that Big Ten championship game is because I think we outlasted them. I think that we're Looked able up. to grind got away. And I think, yeah. I think Michigan relies on maybe a half a dozen or more horses. And after a while, when the game stretches out to four periods, they can start to get a little wear and tear. But I, I would not bet against Michigan for the national championship. They've been knocking on the door for so long. There's the kiss of death. They have the experience in the big games. They've won overtime games. I mean, that game they had against against North Dakota, which is a legitimate yeah. hockey power. I don't know. I I am uh, personally on a on a on a heartfelt note dreading another Michigan national championship this year. How about that though? Three uh, Final Fours in a no row for, for football and for hockey. Three in a row. Yes, one of them three, that three. doesn't involve cheating or any suspensions of the coach. Although the first Final Four Michigan had in that run did involve the coach cheating and being fired, so we can't forget about that. Or you, I won't let you. Yeah, because that's that. what people think that's about. Right. Mel Pearson. Football, too football didn't cheat either, so whatever. I think they suspended their own coach for cheating. Yeah, because remember, everybody right? cried, a bunch of babies. Yeah, that's what Michigan does. They they just roll over for everybody. Right, as Sean? A bunch of babies. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, get on a everybody. Zoom meeting with the commissioner and whine. As long as they're not everybody. pitching a tent in front of the president's office, they roll over for everybody. That's it. They just, that's what they do. That's the, they just love everybody. Classy. Michigan versus everybody. There's that thin skin again. Just the truth, baby. Right, Sean? That's right. all we're bringing here, the truth. So we want to thank our special guest, Neil Rule. If you see him, just say, uh, I will always follow the golden rule. Don't call him the golden rule. <laughs> and, uh, such a bad nickname. If you miss, how does somebody not think it's the golden grizzlies? I, know, I mean, I come know. on. So I'm sure people have thought about it. I think you guys are just. Nobody vocalized it. You guys are just fun and me. Everybody calls him the golden rule. I'm the last guy to come up with it. I, I, I know I'm going to be mocked because it's such a great nickname that. It's not original. It's been there for years. You can catch him uh, on Woodward Sports. Catch him DCFC games. Of course, Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Last week, great ep great episode with our special guest, Erica Erickson. Check that out. Next week, what are we going to have? Well, you'll find out next week. And until then, Cyrus, take us out. Can you dig that? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? <laughs> Famous old story 
of Beauty and the Beast. 